We are in one of the remotest places in our area with Dr. Bruce Means. It's time for salamander hunting in the swamps of the Bradwell Bay Wilderness. This Tai Tai Swamp is one of North Florida's and the lower coastal plains mysterious and I think fabulous environments. Most people don't like to be in a place like this because most people are afraid of swamps and the dark water and bugs which are occasionally in here. It happens that there's a salamander that lives in this kind of habitat. I've been studying it for well over 50 years, called the southern dusky salamander. It's related to the Apalachicola dusky, but until I got interested in their biology back 50 years ago, everyone thought they were all the same species, and so slowly over time I've worked out their differences. Their physical differences help them adapt to different types of wetland environment. Whereas the Apalachicola lives in the headwater streams of steepheads and ravines that occur in the panhandle, which are very oxygenated and sort of tumbling little first order streams. Down here where it's swampy, we're not high in elevation and there's not a lot of relief, then the water kind of ponds up but gently and slowly moves down gradient and forms deposits of peat with the leaf litter and twig litter and everything that's falling down from these dense tai tai and a few other associated plants. And the water comes and goes. It dries out and it fills up depending on rain. But the animals live at the edge of the water and when it's real droughty, they get back up underneath this island of roots that you see all around here is very full of, you know, little holes and tunnels and the animal can burrow into that and stay moist and safe inside that environment when it dries out. If anybody's in that, they'll come out and be trying to get wriggled down into the heat. With the water as high as it is today, the southern dusky is hard to find. And there are other challenges to working in the swamp. This is one of the approximately 15 species of liliaceous kind of plants called Smilax. I like to call them frown axe. If you're in a swamp or you're where this grows, you don't have to starve because that is the best eating material right at the growing tip. Mm. Deer love it. I love it. It makes a great salad down to about there. So if you're ever wandering around like Mr. Tate did in Tate's Hill Swamp, there's plenty of food out here. While they're physically hard to find, Dr. Means knows from his sampling that they're still here. That's not the case everywhere, though. The southern dusky salamander, for some reason unbeknownst to us, has disappeared from most of its habitats, like over 150 different sites where I had studied it for my doctorate and master's degree many, many years ago, back in the early 70s, late 60s. Except right here in Bradwell Bay Wilderness area, this drainage called Monkey Creek, which is surrounded by the wilderness boundary, seems to have the last really extant and flourishing population of this animal. Next, we travel to an entirely different type of wetland environment, where Bruce Means has no trouble at all finding apological dusky salamanders. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.